It's Freedom Files with James Burns. Welcome to the Freedom Files podcast for this Tuesday, November 6, 2012. That is right. It is Election Day here in the United States. I am James Burns, giving you a review of the free and equal second presidential debate. It was held last night on RT. It featured two presidential candidates, Libertarian presidential candidate, former New Mexico Governor Gary Johnson versus Dr. Jill Stein. She is the presidential candidate of the Green Party. They went head-to-head, and it aired on RT.com as well as Free and Equal's website, freeandequal.org. And C-SPAN carried the last uh, Free and Equal debate, which was held on Tuesday, October 23rd, but they had better things to do last night, such as covering Obama and Romney's final campaign rallies. So that's what C-SPAN chose to cover instead of the second free and equal presidential debate. So that kind of was a letdown because I was expecting better from C-SPAN. Anyways, sadly on election eve, most people in the good old U.S. of A. probably didn't even realize there was a second uh, third party debate going on Monday evening. They were probably more focused on Monday Night Football, The Voice, Brand New Revolution, or another show on TV. Admittedly, I do watch Monday Night Football, and I watched a little bit of it last night between the Saints and the Eagles, because I guess you can say I'm kind of, sort of, a Saints fan. Not really anymore. I I just don't really care for following teams, per se. I just like watching football. But at 8 o'clock, I walked here into my office and I watched the debate from start to finish, taking notes and leaving comments on Facebook. Then after the debate was over, I went back into my entertainment room and watched the rest of the game. But anyways, back to what we were saying. So you have uh, this debate that happened last night, which most people should know about, but they don't because of the mainstream media censoring and blackballing uh, other candidates that also are on enough state ballots throughout the country to theoretically get at least the 270 electoral votes needed to be elected president. So I missed most of Monday Night Football and all of the new episode of Revolution so I could watch the debate, which in my opinion was more important, a higher priority. Of course, most of the sheeple, jellyfish, and zombies would disagree with me, but I digress. It was moderated by Free and Equal founder Christina Tobin, as well as RT's Tom Hartman, and included several correspondents. The length of the debate was 90 minutes long. It was held in the uh, RT America studios in D.C. Now, the main topic was U.S. foreign policy, but they branched off and talked about other issues as well. They each had an opening two-minute statement. They talked about uh, several issues. Uh, manufacturing jobs that are being shipped out of the United States, of course, all these free trade agreements, international banking system, U.S. intervention, foreign aid, climate change, disaster response, FEMA, the role of government. They also talked about net neutrality, internet freedom, secrecy, WikiLeaks, the police state, as well as austerity in the U.S., of course, the national debt, and uh, even Proposition 37, uh, GMO labeling, which is on the ballot in California. And then they concluded with a two-minute closing statement. Now, I rated this debate on a topic-by-topic basis, and I had several options per topic, either Gary Johnson would win the topic, or Jill Stein would win the topic, or there would be a tie, or NOTA, which means neither one of them won, in my opinion, and neither one of them tied because, well, I personally did not really care for the subject. All right, so let's start off. The two-minute opening statement, I went ahead and gave it to both of them because I both thought they had a decent two-minute opening statement, so I, I marked that down as a tie. Now, regarding the uh, manufacturing jobs being shipped out of the U.S. and, of course, the free trade agreements, this was the only time that I actually gave a check to Jill Stein, which is the big reason why. She actually understands the damage that's been done by NAFTA and CAFTA. Now, in this topic, Gary Johnson has some very valid points as well, but he missed the bar completely, in my opinion, regarding the free trade agreements. He didn't seem to understand or grasp the damage that's been done by NAFTA or CAFTA, but Jill Stein got it, so I gave that victory to her. Moving on to international banking system. Now, before I continue, most of these 
uh, debates were very close in my opinion. I walked into it with an open mind. Yes, I'm a Gary Johnson supporter. Yes, I'm going to vote for Gary Johnson today. Once I get up and go to the polling booth down the street, I'm going to vote for Gary Johnson. But I decided to go at it from the middle as a kind of a judge. And unfortunately, I saw a lot of people online that were watching the debate that were just in it just to bash uh, Jill Stein. There were a couple people that were a little bit more fair than others, but I won't name names. It was just kind of sad to see that because I actually expected better from you know fellow members of the Liberty Movement. I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more near the end of the review. But anyways, I moved on to international banking system. I thought Gary Johnson did a better job there. Uh, foreign international intervention. I, that was one of those many examples where they kind of tied, where they both made great points, and I didn't really think one did a better job than the other. They basically agreed on a lot of things, and that was one of them, foreign intervention. Uh, foreign aid, I gave that to Gary Johnson because I'm anti-foreign aid. I don't think that we need to be giving out any kind of foreign aid whatsoever. And like Gary Johnson said, it's basically taking money from poor people in this country and giving it to rich people in other countries. Then they moved on to climate change, and this is something that Jill Stein was talking about every chance she got throughout the debate. And every topic, she brought up climate change. Climate change this, climate change that. And I jokingly on Facebook to start a new game, every time that Jill Stein says climate change or a uh, Green New Deal, uh, you take a drink, you take a swig or a shot of whatever your uh, beverage happens to be. <laughs> Just a little pot shot. You know, good humor there. So they both brought up climate change. Uh, they're both believers in climate change. Uh, Jill Stein's a bit more hardcore about it. Uh, Gary Johnson has more of a libertarian attitude regarding the situation. He believes more in the free market approach. Personally, I don't really believe in climate change. I do believe we have pollution. We do have issues. But what we're going through, for the most part, I think is a natural cycle that's happened for you know billions of years now. Uh, could the planet be cleaner? Could we have less pollution, less toxic waste? Yes, but I don't blame that on the people. I blame that on big giant corporations. I blame that on the military industrial complex. I blame that on the, the war machine and the thousands of nukes they've tested over the past several decades and the, the waste out in the oceans that you know these big corporations are allowed to dump into our water. So I don't really blame that on the people. I blame it on these big giant entities. So I don't see why the people should be punished when it's these people at the top that are responsible for the damage that's being done to the planet. So I had to give this one a note on none of the above. I didn't really agree with either one of them because I don't believe in the whole climate change thing. It's kind of complicated. Anyways, let's just move on. Uh, then they got into a disaster response, uh, FEMA, the role of government, and I thought Gary Johnson did a way better job than Jill Stein. Jill Stein, of course, you know, being part of the Green Party, being kind of a left in that quadrant, you know, she believes that the government can do good if you have responsible people in the government. That, you know, she's kind of an old lefty, and. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a matter of personal opinion. But I'm more inclined to agree with Gary Johnson on this one, that when you see situations like with what happened up in the Northeast with uh, Hurricane Sandy, uh, FEMA wasn't really doing much help. They weren't re really lifting a finger. And you had local communities, local churches, temples, and neighbors. They were the ones lifting each other up, helping each other through the tough times. And this is something that's happened time and time again. Usually, most of the time, the federal government and FEMA, they just mess things up. They make a bad situation even worse. So I'm with Gary Johnson on the fact that disaster response should be left to local and state levels. And if there's any extra help needed, then you bring in the federal government. Then, of course, Gary Johnson had an opportunity to uh, ask uh, Jill Stein about net neutrality. They talked a little bit about that. Then they moved on to the topic of secrecy and WikiLeaks. And yes, this was another tie, in my opinion, between both candidates. Uh, same goes with the next topic, police state. I thought that was a tie, too. And then, of course, they talked about the austerity in the U.S. Uh, should we uh, do austerity uh, to get the national debt cut down? Gary Johnson, of course, wants to you know cut the budget, cut the fat. But... Uh, of course, Jill Stein, she wants to you know, bring in her uh, Green New Deal, which she mentioned once again. Uh, she mentioned uh, Green Deal and climate change several times. And, of course, Gary Johnson mentioned bologna once or twice. I guess he likes that over ham and turkey. I don't know. So uh, Gary Johnson, in my opinion, won the austerity portion of the debate. I thought he 
was more on topic than her. And then, of course, the final question they brought up was what's happening in California today is Prop 37, which is GMO labeling. And if it passes, it's going to require all these uh, food companies in California that, you know, sell products to California to label their products as either GMO or non-GMO. Now, there's a lot of people out there that think this is a, a bit of a stretch and uh, too uh, controlling. I disagree. Uh, you have uh, cigarettes are labeled with uh, you know, all the products that cause cancer. I think I would like to know exactly what's in my food. So I agree with Prop 37, and so did Jill Stein, and so did Gary Johnson. So I had to give that to both of them as well. So that's another tie, Prop 37, and hopefully Prop 37 will pass in California, along with several uh, pro-marijuana bills that are on other states like in uh, what Colorado, Oregon, and uh, Washington. So hopefully it'll be a good day for um, you know several good bills and initiatives that are on the ballots in various states. There's also a really good pro-Second Amendment uh, bill on the Louisiana ballot as well. So, yeah, there's a couple good ones out there, a couple bad ones, including uh, two clowns running for president. And in conclusion, uh, they had um, Gary Johnson and Jill Stein. They had a closing statement. Each had two minutes. They each made uh, the case why they should be president. Jill Stein talked once again about climate change, New Deal. Those are obviously big cornerstones, foundations of her policy. She also mentioned uh, universal health care, ending student loan debt, uh, providing free public higher education, halting the wars for oil. And Gary Johnson, he came in uh, swinging with his closing statement, you know, talking about his track record as a two-term governor out of New Mexico and how basically you have to vote for who you believe in. And that, that's, that's a real vote, is when you vote for somebody you believe in, it doesn't matter if they have a, a slim to none chance. If you believe in that person, that's the person you should vote for. And, of course, he talked about how he was to the left of Obama when it came to civil liberties. He's to the right of Mitt Romney when it came to being a physical responsibility, which is true. I mean, that's exactly what the Libertarian Party is. It's like right in the middle. It's the best of both worlds. That's a big reason why I consider myself to be a Libertarian. And, of course, he you know used his track record as a small business owner. And he talked about how he was on the ballot in 48 states, including uh, as a writing candidate in Michigan. And then he, he pointed the finger, justifiably so, at Oklahoma, who doesn't have any other um, third parties on their ballot. They only have Republican and Democrats, so shame on you, Oklahoma, for that fact. And the closing statement, I gave it to Gary Johnson. And, of course, the overall win goes to Gary Johnson. Uh, he won the debate, in my opinion. And uh, that is just my opinion, because that's the way the debate works. And this is something I've mentioned time and time again, is that it's a matter of personal opinion. There is no scorecard at the end, except for the scorecard that you make. For example, that was my scorecard. So in my view, Gary Johnson won the debate. Now, a lot of people that are Jill Stein supporters believe she won the debate. And that's just the way it goes. But all in all, in this 90-minute debate between Jill Stein and uh, Gary Johnson, it was jam-packed from start to finish. Uh, both candidates did a phenomenal job, and uh, they had a chance to answer every single question brought up. And there's even a couple rebuttals there, a couple of back and forth, but it was a lot more um, civil than what you got in other debates, especially those done by the Commission on Presidential Debate. And Gary Johnson and Jill Stein did keep it on topic. They didn't mudsling. They didn't really name call. And they just focused on the issues. And a, a big shout out, a big applause and kudos to everybody involved in putting on the second free and equal RT presidential debate. Uh, Christina Tobin, of course, the founder of Free and Equal, Tom Hartman, as well as everybody at Free and Equal and RT America. They did a fantastic job pulling off this debate and putting it together. And it was an awesome debate. It was uh, smooth. It was Great. I think it was even better than uh, the the first uh, free and equal debate a couple weeks ago, because it just it just seemed like it was more organized. Unfortunately, it didn't get as much press coverage, because well, obviously you didn't have a big name like Larry King moderating it. You didn't have C-SPAN picking it up. But all in all, I thought it was a great debate, and I definitely would recommend you go watching it. And I'm sure it's going to be on YouTube. And uh, if it is already, I will go ahead and link it to this. Uh, debate review up on the Freedom Files channel on this 
specific video. So go back and uh, check it out if you haven't had a chance to do so. And of course, today is Election Day in the U.S. So if you are a registered voter and if you're going to go out and vote, before you cast your vote for Obama or Romney, which is what most people are going to do today, I ask that you please look at all the other candidates that are going to be on the ballot in your state, such as the Libertarian presidential candidate Gary Johnson, Green Party presidential candidate Jill Stein, Constitution Party candidate Virgil Good, uh, Justice Party candidate... Uh, Rocky Anderson, Peace and Freedom Party, Roseanne Barr, and uh, several others as well. Look at each candidate that's on the ballot in your state. Look over them. Look at their track record. Look where they stand on the issues. And ask yourself, seriously, which candidate would you actually support? If your vote could determine the election, you voted for candidate A, candidate A would win. Which one would you actually vote for? Don't give in to peer pressure. Don't vote for this candidate because all your friends are telling you to. Don't vote for that candidate out of fear or paranoia or whatever you want to do. If you believe in Romney, fine, vote for Romney. If you believe in Obama, vote for Romney. But all I ask is that you give these other candidates that the mainstream media corporatized propaganda machine has given next to no time a chance. Go and look at them. Do some research. Do... Do research on all the candidates on the ballot in your state, not just for the presidency, but for Congress, for Senate. If there's just a couple Senate races going on across the country, all the uh, state uh, initiatives and ballots, any state officials running for office, local office. Look at every single candidate and issue and amendment or whatever it's going to be called that you're going to have to go into the polling place today on Selection Day. I mean, Election Day and vote on. Don't just go down and pull all Republican or all Democrat or all yes or all no on all these issues. Look at it line by line. Do your research. Do your homework. Be responsible. And go in and you know, vote for what you believe in. And I'm going to go in today. I'm going to vote for Gary Johnson for president. I'm going to vote for Randall Lord for U.S. Congress here in my district. And I'm going to vote for some other things as well. And that's all I ask you to do too is just do what's right. Don't just go in and see it as a hassle. It's like, oh, I'm just going to walk in and, and vote real quick and then I'll be done. No, you go in knowing exactly what you're going to do. You go in with your game plan. Okay, this is who I'm going to vote for here, then here, then here, then these issues. I'm going to vote here on that one. Okay. On this one. Okay. That one. Okay. Don't just go boom, 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 boom. I'm done. Because those decisions that you make today at the election in your precincts, whether it's a local, uh, state, or all the way up to the, the presidency itself, is going to affect us over the next couple of years and perhaps even next couple decades. And so people need to take elections a bit more seriously and be a lot more responsible and do some research when you're going to the ballot. And I'll say this because I'm not planning on doing an election review because as you well know, those of you that have been following me for three years now, I do not see any difference between the two-party puppet show. I do not see a difference between Romney and Obama. I know there are some differences, but it doesn't matter which one's going to win tonight. And chances are they probably won't even have a winner tonight. It's going to be so close, in my opinion. I've made that prediction that it's probably going to be a couple days or perhaps even a couple weeks or maybe even a couple months if the candidates each get 269, 269 in the electoral vote. That means it's going to go down to uh, Congress to make the, the final call as to who's president and vice president. So we may not know tonight who is the next puppet in chief. So who knows how it's going to play out. But either way, we're going to get screwed. And you know what? I'm looking at the future. I'm looking at turning things around. And if the Libertarian Party or any other third party gets at least 5% of the vote, that is going to be a very good sign for the cause of a trans party system because that's what we need in this country. I'm tired of this duopoly. I'm tired of the Republicans and Democrats being in control. It's time for more options. It's time for more ideas. Whether you agree with the Green Party or not, they deserve a, a seat at the table. Just like the Libertarian Party does, just like the Constitution Party, the Justice Party, they all deserve a place and a say and a voice and an opportunity to be heard by the people. And that's what I've been trying to do over the past couple of years. While I support Gary Johnson and while I would consider myself a libertarian, I have come to recognize over the past couple of years that not everybody in this country is a libertarian. Not everybody in this country is a conservative. 
Not everybody in this country is a moderate. Not everybody in this country is a liberal. We have different points of views. And the goal should be for us to work together, to find uh, common ground, to meet in the middle, to work things out. That's the way it should be. Unfortunately, for too long now, you've had all sides demonizing each other. You've seen that a lot in uh, the mainstream media, left versus right, the, the talking heads on TV, and of course, the big time multi-million dollar uh, neocon talk show hosts always doing that. And I, I know this from personal experience because, of course, I used to be uh, a Kool-Aid drinking Republican in my youth when I was a kid, and I listened to Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity back in the day. And I know what that means because they'd always demonize the liberals. It was always the Democrats' faults. Democrat this, Democrat that, liberal, liberal, liberal. But it's not that way. Everybody's to blame. Everybody's at fault here. There's some good stuff that liberals do. There's some bad stuff that liberals do. The same thing goes for conservatives and every other group out there. But the problem is you have too much division, too much infighting, too much uh, childish activity going on when it comes to the process of running the government. And that's you know, one of the big reasons why we're in the situation that we're in. That and the fact that most of the people in this country have given up. Either they don't care or they don't want to care. They're like an ostrich with their head in the sand. And they've just become apathetic. They'd rather uh, worry about football or their favorite reality show or, I don't know, going out drinking on Friday nights and getting laid. Another thing that I've come to realize over the past three years of doing Freedom Files and, of course, the past five years of being a Ron Paul supporter is that the best change that we have of making isn't going to be at the federal level, not, not yet anyways. It's going to be at the local and state levels. And for a while now, I have tried to focus on all three of those aspects. Well, four actually, local, state, uh, the, the government level, federal level, and of course at the world level. And there, there's two aspects where I don't really have any control over. It's the global level with all this stuff that happens throughout the world, the debts, the wars, the growing uh, new world order. I have no control over that. I don't have any control over what happens in D.C., in the Den of Crooks. It keeps getting worse and worse, and it doesn't matter who's going to be president, like I said, which is why I'm not going to do an elections result episode of Freedom Files. In fact, Freedom Files is going on hiatus. That is the announcement I wanted to make. I have been thinking about this for about a month now. And, you know, I, I tried to get the uh, website up and running. I tried to make Freedom Files more news-oriented, not about me. And there was some success, but there was, you know, some disappointment. And I'm also trying to find a job. And I also want to start focusing on other things in the world well, when I mean world, I mean in the local world, here and where I live, of course, regionally and in my state. And that's where I'm going to start focusing things on, and as well as personally, too. So I'm putting freedomfiles.us in cold storage for now. So whenever you uh, go to freedomfiles.us, it's just going to go straight to the Freedom Files US YouTube channel. And I'm not saying that I'm, I'm shutting it down. I'm not saying that I'm uh, locking the door and calling it quits. I'm just taking some time off. And I may do an occasional podcast here or there, maybe even a web show. But for a while, I'm going to walk away from this and I'm going to go in a new direction, figure some things out that I've been meaning to for a while now. It's been one of those years for me. And I'm also going to be focusing on more of the, the spiritual aspect of my life. You know, I, it's, it's a little side thing. I don't like to talk about it much, but that's another thing I'm going to work on as well, fine-tuning that. But there's a couple of little things I'm going to be doing, trying to get a job, like I mentioned, uh, local activism. I might even run for office locally in 2014 or somewhere down the road. I don't know what I'm going to do, or at least try and help get more people uh, good people elected locally, but that's where my focus is going to be. I mean, the thing is, there's so many other great people out there in the alternative media movement, and you know, I I know that, and that's one reason why I feel okay with this decision because I know that you have plenty of others out there fighting the good fight, and I know that I'm not really going to be missed. <laughs> you know, I was a small fish. You know, I, I tried to, you know, build myself up, and I. You know, I had some good times, you know, it was a struggle, 
Nothing's ever easy, you know, just like my online flag company. But, you know, that's one thing about life, you know, you, you have mostly failures and you very rarely get the taste of victory or success, but you got to keep picking yourself back up, uh, learning your, learning from your mistakes and uh, pressing forward. And that's what I'm doing. I'm uh, finally deciding to uh, walk away from a couple things and uh, reassess the situation. Now is a great time as ever because the election season is wrapping up and hopefully it'll wrap up peacefully and you won't have riots in the street like there's been you know, some fear of, of that possibly happening. Hopefully that will not transpire. But anyways, Freedom Files will be on hiatus. But I wanted to say this final thing to all of you that have been following me. For whatever it's been for you the last three days, last three weeks, months, or the last three years since I started back in the fall of 2009, thank you so much for all the, the times that you allowed me in your life to uh, talk to you about my views and opinions, uh, my advice, my thoughts on the world. Thank you for all the times you watched my web shows or listened to my radio show, whether it was on American Freedom Radio or Ron Paul Radio. And, of course, thank you to everybody, American Freedom Radio and Ron Paul Radio, for uh, giving me the opportunity to be on your networks. And, of course, thank you all for listening to my podcast and, of course, all my friends and fellow patriots in the uh, – movement and the alternative media and the liberty movement part of the ron paul revolution i'm still part of the fight i'm just going to be uh, going at it from a different direction and i may bring back freedom files in another month or so i don't know maybe after the holidays are over maybe i'll feel like bringing it back but for now i'm just going to um just i guess go into a postseason as they say and uh, we'll just see how it is by the end of the year. Who knows? Maybe the Mayans are right. Maybe uh, December 21st, it won't matter because it'll all be over. <laughs> One final note for everybody out there that might be concerned about this question. Uh, the um, postponement of any uh, further Freedom Files does not mean uh, the same thing for Cannabis Corner, which is, of course, hosted by my dad, Kerry Burns. And it started off as a spinoff to Freedom Files, but it's been successful. It's been able to uh, stand on its own two feet, and a lot of that has to do with my dad's passion for that subject over the past uh, 40 years of being a, a pro-legalization advocate, and of course an expert regarding cannabis and of course hemp. So that show, Cannabis Corner, will continue without Freedom Files, and I think that he's done more than enough to keep that show going on long and strong for years to come, and so no matter what happens to Freedom Files, as long as my dad continues to want to do Cannabis Corner, he will continue to do Cannabis Corner. So no worries about that for all of you Cannabis Corner fans. And who knows? Like I said, by the end of the year after um, you know uh, Thanksgiving, um, Festivus, Christmas, and New Year's is over and we've survived the uh, apocalypse, maybe in 2013 I might want to bring back Freedom Files with a vengeance, but you never know. It just depends on what's in the cards for me. But anyways, I ask you all to not give up and to keep the fight going. And if you don't feel like you're making a difference in what you're doing as part of this movement, then try and find something else to do. Find some other uh, place to fit in where you could make a difference. And that's what I'm doing. I'm focusing locally because I believe that's where we have to do. I think that's where our best chance of success in the long run from bottom up is going to transpire. And that's what I'm going to do locally right here in my area and of course in my state and if I think if more people start doing that then I think we start getting some good people elected to office locally statewide and eventually into Congress and of course into the White House so it's a long process and it's one that I'm continuing to fight and be part of it's just that I'm starting to try and reassess where I fit in the whole scheme of things so thank you so much for all your years of listening to Freedom Files, and who knows, maybe I'll be back in a couple months, or maybe I'll be back next week with more Freedom Files. But for now, uh, this is James Burns wishing you happy holidays, and hopefully I'll see you on the other side.